We're standing just inside the terminal moraine of the Victoria Glacier here. And uh, we're on a fairly small unit, but it looks very different from uh, just about anything else around us. Scott, do you want to describe what we've got here? Well, you're right, Art. It is uh, quite different than anything else uh, that we've got around us. And uh, what's different about it is that it's a fine grain sediment. Uh, in this case, uh, almost entirely composed of silt, silt-sized grains. And uh, our uh, looking at its location on the landscape and its position, as you noted, uh, adjacent to the terminal moraine, this is sediment that was probably laid down in a small lake that formed at some point during the retreat of this glacier. And it was probably here long enough to uh, lay down uh, a thickness of this uh, silt of uh, uh, you know, a few meters anyway in thickness. And we also see it on the other side of the valley, which would indicate that the lake uh, filled the lower part of the valley here adjacent to this uh, terminal moraine. Uh, the other characteristic, if you dig into it, as I've done here, we see uh, this characteristic uh, depositional layering in the soil, uh, a platy structure, uh, if you will, of, uh, of sediment uh, right through this deposit, uh, indicating this uh, sort of uh, repeated depositional cycle that is typical of, uh, of glacial lacustrine environments. And uh, it's important that we see this here in this context, immediately adjacent, to a glacier today. We know this is a glacierized system. We can place this particular deposit in context with the present glacier and that's important later on when we try to interpret sediments that look like this but are found thousands of miles away from present glaciers. Well I'm familiar with some fairly large large areas that are made up of materials like this. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the extent of this type of uh, parent material? Right so this is an important parent material for many soils in Canada. Some uh, very extensive deposits of glacial lacustrine material occur on the Great Plains. And in that case, these would have been uh, very large lakes uh, that formed in the front of the continental glaciers and laid down literally hundreds of thousands of hectares of material like this that today support some of the best agricultural soils that we have uh, mm -hmm. out on the Great Plains. The other, uh, other area, of course, that comes to mind is, is in the Cordillera of British Columbia. Most of the major river systems, uh, the Fraser, the Thompson, the Okanagan, uh, all have uh, this kind of parent material occurring in them, uh, today usually existing as uh, glacial, glacial lacustrine terraces, uh, like we've seen in the Kamloops area and are also common in parts of the Okanagan, that were formed uh, when those valleys were uh, under uh, deglaciation and we had uh, very large lakes formed uh, in those valley systems because of blockages perhaps of other ice or, uh, or moraine materials and depositing this same one. And if we look at the details of the structure of those materials, they're almost identical to what we see here in this valley in this very small deposit. So this is a very small feature here, but uh, on the larger scale in Western Canada, this is a fairly major land unit. A, a, a major land unit, productive land, both for forests and for, for agriculture. And I think the reason is, uh, you know, this nice uniform texture, uh, good moisture holding capacity. They often tend to uh, be uh, quite fertile. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, an important parent material for soil development in, uh, in, in Canada.